Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren. I didn't have much luck with my microphone yesterday. It uh, seemed very quiet. So today I've got the AirPods in again, uh, using the microphone on them. Hopefully I will sound quite clear to you. All right, so why are we here? This is the dust extractor I've been using for my jointing plane and also for my belt sander. It's split off between the two and sadly it's died. It doesn't work anymore, the motor doesn't turn. I've checked the capacitor and the switch and they're both fine. The only thing left is the winding. So uh, not really economical to repair at this point. And it takes up a lot of space. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different, something a whole heap of people go, no, no, you can't do that. You've got to use a proper dust extractor. I'm gonna try and use a couple of vacuum cleaners and modify them to fit. So here we go. So I'm gonna use these two Ryobi vacuum cleaners I bought yesterday. The plan is, is to adapt the heads, these heads here, well not really adapt them that much, but position them directly where the dust is formed or chips are formed in the case of the plane or planer and catch them straight away before they get to go down into the machine and accumulate where they have been. And I'll show you what I mean by that, by accumulate where they have been. So this is the underneath of my jointing plane. This is the boxed in area, bit of uh, acrylic there to keep everything contained. And the idea is it's meant to suck uh, through the low pressure hose to the dust extractor on the opposite side. I'll show you that in a tick. But as you can clearly see, this stuff never gets removed. I've put a little air hole in here at the bottom in the hope that it would suck air through and uh, therefore pull the wood. And there's a couple of other little holes as well, which you probably can't see. Um, but it, it isn't sucking the air through and pulling the wood through at all. The wood's just accumulating here in this corner and it's sucking away probably about two thirds of the wood chips. So the plan is to remove this plywood panel from this side and rather than have a big hose go in here, we'll just have the small vacuum hose go in right up to the top or where the chips are formed and take it off directly there. Well, I was wrong about just how much was being collected by the low pressure high volume extraction system very very little as it turns out I had a hard time getting the panel off because I couldn't push it backwards to lift it out because of all those chips so I've got a bit of work to do there with the dust extractor my intention is to actually mount one of these little floor cleaning heads just here like this uh, obviously this hose will be out of the way by then I'll be able to curl it around a bit more because what's happening is the dust is actually flying off the edge of the belt here coming this way the vacuum of course pulls most of it back there probably 80 so percent of it goes back that way but a little bit comes this way off the side and some also comes straight off so I'm hoping that by having here I'll capture a larger percentage of it we'll give that a try I've mounted the head very close to the belt itself. I've popped the base out with the bristles and the squeegee. I've taken the squeegee off but popped the bristles back in. Uh, in retrospect I probably didn't need to do that but anyway I thought it was a good idea at the time. So now we have a little tiny vacuum cleaner down next to the belt sander and yeah, instead of that great big dust extractor we had before. Let's see how it works. Let's get a bit of a close-up on this fella and see if we can see the dust being sucked away. Sadly, one of the problems I've always had with the belt sander is a lot of the dust flies off at this point, uh, no matter what the extractor I used, even on the old extractor. And that's why this is always caked in pitch and sawdust. Um, but as far as I can tell, it was working well at this point. I certainly, the only sawdust I saw flying off was flying off from this area. I didn't see anything coming away from this area, which is good. Um, it used to always be of course but then of course that was picked up mostly in there so it seems to be working it seems to be working well i've taken the brush slash squeegee out of the vacuum head here um, it was just these little tabs just needed to be pressed in they popped up out of here and the whole thing popped out 
which leaves me with a nice big catching area with no bristles or rubber squeegee in the way. So that whole thing now, I'm planning on putting up here. Where are we? <laughs> Straddle across. It's probably hard for you to work out what that is, really. But that is what you're looking at there is the drum and blade that actually spins to plane the wood. So now the plan here is to get this to sit across. There we go. Something like this or back here like this. I'm sorry it is hard to see. Ugh, there you go. It's a lot easier for me to see in there than it is for you guys. I apologize for that. But anyway, yeah, the plan is to mount this inside the cabinet here so this just sucks up wood. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's get it all running and uh, see how well it does. Oh, well, it's certainly not catching 100%. You can see quite a bit on the floor there. Let's scoot down and have a look inside. Yeah, no, so we're not catching that much, unfortunately. Oh, it's, oh, actually, it's kept a lot off this side. Okay, I, I stand corrected. We're catching about two thirds. So it's, we're doing slightly better so far than the old extraction system I had. But we can do better, I'm sure. Okay, so to catch the shavings as they fall down from the jointing plane, I've built myself this plastic tray here that'll sit underneath the blades, I guess, in the plane. Got a little lip around here. I drew this thing up in Fusion 360 and printed it out on a, on a 3D printer. So the first thing I did was drew a square down the bottom, 200 by 200, which this is. And that's as big as I can print on that printer, but it's big enough for the job at hand. Hopefully, we'll find that out shortly. I then did an offset plane, and I drew this rectangle. And I used a function called loft to join from the bottom to the top to automatically draw in the walls, which it does nicely. Except here, <laughs> where it drew a wall so thin the 3D printer couldn't print it and I didn't think to measure it before while it was on the computer. I just said, oh yep, wall there, no worries, let's print. And it came out like thin strands of hair in this area and didn't do the job very well or won't do the job very well. So I'm just going to use this piece as a test fit now to make sure the hose fits in here, make sure these lips are big enough to fix it underneath and uh, then I'll redraw it and we'll get a wall in here. Okay, let's see if this bit fits. Actually, it'll probably go that way. Hey, excellent! Woohoo! Let's see how it works. So now for the big test. Down the bottom I've got my GoPro pointing up underneath so we can see what sort of dust's coming out of it if it misses any. I've cleaned out underneath too with the vacuum cleaner so we can go back in and have a look later. I think it looks like I've missed a tiny bit. Yeah. There we go. Done. It's all nice and clean. Got a couple of lights pointing up. And so then up the top here, up the top here I've got a nice wide piece of wood and I'm going to use that to make my shavings and the reason I'm using a wide piece of wood is if you recall my biggest concern with this or where I think it's going to fall down is that uh, long shavings will clog it being a narrow hose I think that's why these things normally have a big wide hose and why a wide hose is normally better 
So, yeah, he's hoping this works. Fingers crossed. So back down here at the GoPro, what do we got? There's a couple of shavings of snuff past. Just at the end. Well they were there. But anyway, there's a few shavings of snuff past on that side. The centre and the other side have stayed clear. So it's got well let's hope it's sucked out all of it. Let's hope it's not stuck up the top there. Okay, so let's pull the hose out and see how it went as far as clogging goes. Well, there doesn't appear to be any clogging here. How about up there? Oh wow! Oh wow, it works! Okay, let's look. Look at that. It's clear as a whistle in there. It works. It's a success. Okay, well, I'll make sure I upload the plans for this one to Thingiverse so you can all do it. Assuming it's, uh, you've got the same size plane. <laughs> After the success at the jointing plane with the little cowl or dust collector I built for there. I'm very tempted to build one for here too. This works, but it doesn't look great. It's got a bit sticking up we don't really need. And it would be nice to have a bit more of a catchment area around here. I need to keep it away from this because wood rests against this sometimes when you're sanding it. So yeah, we don't want that bashing against the plastic and vibrating it to pieces. But yeah, I think we can rig something up that fits in this area and works as well as this, but looks a lot more functional. This video ended up taking a lot longer than originally intended, and uh, that was because of problems with the 3D printer. So I won't do that in this video. I'll leave this video here so we can have something. <laughs> it's been too long. And um, yeah, we'll deal with that in another video. So anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.